Hello lovely students and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today we're going to be covering the topic of slang but more importantly rhyming slang. I'm going to teach you how and why we use phrases like holy moly, nitty gritty, fuddy duddy, higgledy piggledy. It's the ultimate vocabulary, grammar and slang and pronunciation lesson. <laughs> Today I'm going to teach you about something that most native speakers won't even realise they do and they certainly wouldn't be able to explain why. We're going to talk about rhyming reduplication. Before we get started, two important points. Number one, we have a free PDF that goes with today's lesson. If you'd like to download it, click on the link in the description box. It's got everything we cover today, lots of examples, plus a quiz so you can test your understanding. The next thing I want to mention is language hawk. You might have noticed that I have not done a sponsorship on my channel for a very long time and this isn't a sponsorship, I've become a part of this company. I started to get a little bit frustrated with how some online tutoring platforms were treating their teachers so I looked for an alternative, found language hawk and was so impressed I decided to become a part of it. On language hawk you can find your perfect one-on-one -on -one language tutor whether you're learning English or one of many other languages. Languatalk is incredibly selective about the quality of tutors on their platform but that doesn't mean they're all really expensive. I encourage you to have a look through, watch all the tutors introduction videos and choose your perfect fit. I found my perfect tutor for Italian, Alice, and I've had an amazing experience. Un sacco di cose, per esempio a un'azienda di um the gardening mm -hmm, di giardinaggio click on the link in the description box to explore the tutors on language talk find your perfect fit and organize a trial class i know you're here because you want to improve your english if you want to take it really seriously i highly recommend looking for a one-on-one -on -one tutor as an extra bonus when you pay for your first class on language talk you can forward the receipt to my email address and I'll send you a copy of my idioms and phrasal verbs ebook for free. This is usually worth $15, so it's worth it. Okay, I've written a little poem for you and there's a reason behind it. I've not just gone into poetry. <laughs> there was once a teacher from Britain who gave classes to Alfonso the kitten, but he didn't like reading. He just wanted feeding, so he munched up what Lucy had written. <laughs> Alfonso is the name of my cat. Now there is something inherently satisfying about rhyming words, isn't there? Apparently it makes our brains really happy when they hear the sound patterns that occur in rhymes. Now we do this a lot in English, especially to say something in a light-hearted way. For example, holy moly, there are a lot of examples. Holy moly is an interjection showing surprise. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you the nitty-gritty. The nitty-gritty is the important detail. We're going to go from the itsy-bitsy, itsy-bitsy means very very small, to the higgledy-piggledy. Higgledy-piggledy means confused or jumbled. Trust me, these expressions are the bee's knees. <laughs> the bee's knees is an idiom that means excellent. Okie dokie, let's go. Okie dokie means okay. See, there are a lot of them. Okay, so these rhyming expressions are called rhyming reduplication. And in rhyming reduplication, we alter the beginning of the word. And generally, this is a consonant or a consonant cluster. For example, ease, ease. Bees, knees. Bees, knees is a copy apart from the consonant sounds at the start of the words. Two-part expressions like this sound extremely informal and bring the register right down to a fun level so that you won't sound hoity-toity. <laughs> Another one. Hoity-toity is behaving like you are better than everyone else. I hate all this hoity-toity. Here are a few more. Boogie-woogie. Oh, I love that one. Boogie-woogie. Boogie means dance and so does boogie woogie. Let's go out next weekend and boogie woogie. Uh, that one does sound a little old fashioned. This one does too, but not in the same way. Fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy. This noun or sometimes adjective describes someone who is old fashioned or something that is old fashioned. I find it adorable though. 
don't be such a fuddy-duddy, come out tonight, or his outfit was a bit fuddy-duddy. We also have quite a childish one, silly billy, silly billy, and this is what we say to children who aren't behaving in a sensible way. We also use it a lot with our pets because we treat our pets as our children in the UK. The tone of voice is important with this one as otherwise it could sound pretty insulting. Oh, you are a silly billy. Take that bucket off your head. Fun fact, I actually got a bucket stuck on my head as a child. I put it on like this and put the strap under my chin to look like a soldier. I was definitely a silly billy. It had to be cut off and it was my favorite bucket. In fact, I don't think I've recovered. Another? Hocus Pocus. This is silliness or magical activity often used to trick someone. Just be honest, stop all this Hocus Pocus. Often wizards will say it before casting a spell. Hocus Pocus, she's disappeared. We also have lovey dovey. This is a romantic adjective for people who show PDAs, ah, PDAs. These are public displays of affection. Mum and dad are far too lovey-dovey. They're always holding hands. Another you might come across, not so common, helter-skelter. This is either a type of slide that goes all the way around like that, you'll find it in a playground, or an adjective to describe hurrying and confusion. We had a helter-skelter journey to the show. We also have one that I love to say, namby-pamby. Nambi Pambi, this is an adjective meaning weak, feeble, maybe excessively emotional, and it's a bit cruel, to be honest. What a Nambi Pambi idea, it's really insulting. <laughs> Willy nilly is one that I use all the time, and this is an adverb to describe doing something in an irregular way. The new agency just sends its proposals willy nilly. Yeah, if you do something willy nilly, it's without planning or organization. It's in a random, chaotic way. Don't just do it willy nilly. Think about it first. We also have Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. And this is an exclamation showing surprise or shock. And I'm pretty sure that it comes from avoiding saying something blasphemous, um, avoiding saying Jesus Christ, because we have Jesus Christ, Jeepers Creepers. Some people want to avoid that. It's quite a nice one to use. Jeepers Creepers, knock on the door before you just come in next time. Now, let's move on to the topic of nicknames. British people quite like assigning nicknames to each other and we love them even more if they rhyme. So you could have a steady Eddie, Handy Andy, Merry Jerry, Bonnie Johnny, Smiley Kylie. I'm often called Juicy Lucy. It really works well with two syllable names. Here's a challenge for you. Can you think of a rhyming reduplication for your own name or a British name that you can think of? Preferably your own name, but some of them might be quite difficult. I'm thinking Mohammed doesn't really rhyme with much. Maybe you could go with Mo. Now, anyone can make rhyming reduplications about anything and there's a really common format. It often happens by replacing the first consonant with w in the reduplication. It's very childlike as you can hear. My friend Jenny Wenny wrote a bookie wookie about a doggy woggy. There's another challenge for you in the comments section. See if you can write a childish sentence using this W consonant sound. It's your homework won't work. <laughs> Okay, one more thing I want to cover. Rhyming schmiming. Rhyming schmiming. Why do we say things like that? This is called schm, schm reduplication. I repeated the word rhyming, but I replaced the first consonant with schm, rhyming schmiming. I used it here as an intensifier to make the concept more memorable. Here we have some more. Money schmoney. This kind of means like money's not important or money's no object. Homework, schmomework. <laughs> if I heard this, I'd think that the speaker was implying that there are better things to do. We also have bored schmored. This is sort of confrontational. It's like saying, I don't believe you. You aren't bored. Or you don't have to be bored. Schm reduplication originated in Yiddish and it's generally used to indicate irony, sarcasm, skepticism, 
to be dismissive or as an interjection. It really depends on the context and the intonation and it's very informal. Do not use this in the job interview. I thought it would be valuable to mention it because you do hear it in a lot of movies, especially ones based in New York. You might hear people saying, I feel fancy schmancy today. Bit of emphasis there, fancy schmancy. Okay, that's it for today. I really enjoyed this lesson. It's fascinating. It's such a fascinating topic to me. I like helping you to understand why we say and use certain things. Don't forget to check out Languatalk. Remember that once you've booked your first paid lesson on Languatalk with your perfect one-on-one -on -one tutor, you can forward your receipt to me on my email address and I will send you a copy of my idioms and phrasal verbs workbook for free as an extra bonus. You can also download the PDF for today's lesson. The link is down there as well. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Instagram, my Facebook and my website englishwithlucy.com. On that website you can find an interactive pronunciation tool and you can also see all of my courses. We've got lots of different topics. You can go really in depth into one topic like phrasal verbs, idioms, slang, or you can take my level courses where you can master B1 English or B2 English, etc. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah!